everyone and welcome to another episode from the Couch to Rally series. This is going to be probably the popular one uh, because a lot of people are asking about what did I do to the bike? What was worth it? What was not worth it? What was necessary in order to ride? And the surprising answer to these questions actually is that I think that the Tenere is pretty much ready to race. Um, after a few modifications, uh, if you don't want to win the race. And I have been second on the second day, so in a way you can actually probably even win the race with the Tenere. Now this Tenere is almost stock and there are very few changes which I did specifically for the rally. Most of the things which I have here are overlanding, traveling oriented changes rather than high performance uh, changes. So if you're looking for a uh, suspension tips for racing, this is not the video uh, which would actually talk about it. So let's get into it. And when I was talking about the suspension, let's just talk about suspension. Now, this Tenere has completely stock front forks and has the only change in the rear is the stronger spring which is calculated for my weight so i firmly believe that that's enough for uh, amateur racing um, what you need to do in order to set up your suspension and that's regardless whether rally or not is that you need to have a correct sag in the front in the front and in the back so you have measured your sag, you have played with the preload adjustment in the back and you still cannot get the correct value. Well, that usually means that you need a stronger spring. Um, the springs come in a different uh, rates. Um, standard is 70. Uh, I have 80 uh, there, but I will need more uh, for the luggage. So this is 85 spring. Um, you swap it, it's very easy, four bolts in the back, then the tricky part is to take the spring off, um, and that's it. The front forks on a Tenere don't have the preload adjustment, so what to do about that? You can either buy a really expensive preload um, adjustment caps for the forks, or from Rally Raid, <laughs> or uh, from Rally Raid as well, you can buy these uh, plastic spacers. The idea here is that you measure your sag and you know how much adjustment on the fork you need in order to achieve a correct tack in the front. So you take the spacers, you put them in the front of the, of the fork, or at the top of the fork, and that way you adjust the preload. It's not adjustable, so you cannot adjust it you know, for different um, scenarios but it's better than riding with the wrong sack in the front all the time so that's a cheap variant to do that um, easy to do I mean I have not been able to do that for the rally didn't have a time so you can get completely insane with the suspension you can replace the whole rear shock with the rally rate um, extreme and the front fork with the closed cartridges from rally rate and all-ins and all that but to be honest I don't even know if I would know the difference people say yeah you would but to be honest you can race it with the suspension okay for the next things I'm probably gonna take the camera and show you what exactly I did a lot of people were kind of like what tires do I need and I was asking around and I got very, very different uh, answers. Most of the people were kind of like, you are completely crazy to go on a rally with used tires and even riding on them today. And these are Moto's Tractionator ADV. Um, and I kind of like them and I came to Croatia on them. They already had about 1000 kilometers on them when I bought them. So 2,000 kilometers, tire on a, kilometers on the tire when the race started. And this tire was actually really nice. You can see the knobs here are quite okay. Uh, they have the sharp edges in here as well. Here 
on the other hand after three days completely destroyed so this is tire after three days this is completely missing uh, the knobs are chewed up in the middle but on the end this is what you actually want to start with now this is uh, not a 50-50 tire but it is not also like a special race tire the front was actually holding up pretty well the only problem with that one is that on the road is a little bit sketchy don't sweat it about the tires you can and i have seen people racing on a 50 50 tires of course they didn't win but they also didn't lose two more things to mention about the tires now when i'm back from croatia so on the way to Croatia, I was complaining that the bike at high speed snakes or waves from side to side. And I thought it was before because of the tires, which probably was. But on the way back, that disappeared. It's not happening anymore, even at 130 speed. Um, so I'm not sure why. Uh, maybe different distribution, but I do have same stuff. I do now use less pressure. I use 32 PSI. Now I'm having 25 in the front so maybe that helped maybe they liked less pressure or maybe they just needed to wore out a little bit and to set a, a little bit but everything is fine you can now use them um, at high speed no issues now another thing is that i do have outdex tubeless conversion on the bike and the controversy here is that the front rim is not tubeless safe rim it's not tubeless ready rim which means that there is a slight chance that the tire will pop off the bead if you hit it hard or if you lose pressure a lot, um, like suddenly. Now that didn't happen during the rally and we did go through really hard terrain and there were really big stones which you had to kind of go over and all that. Um, you know a, a technique helps with this a lot because if you are able to lift up the front wheel there is much less impact onto the wheel tire and suspension and all that but the good news is that the two the altex held up pretty well i haven't lost any pressure the pressures i raced was 20 to 20 in the front and 22 in the back psi the benefit of this is that you would not believe how many people had pinched tubes, um, flats from, you know, nails and all that. Almost every single day somebody had that. I did have with me mushroom plugs to plug it, but they didn't need anything. So I, I think that's worth mentioning. Okay, then other things. So as you can see, I do have the high fender modification, which we have done in Punk Moto. Now, I did this because I was worried about mud and we really had just one single puddle to be honest. So this one, probably not necessary. On the other hand, it looks cool. It looks like a rally bike, uh, but that's probably about it for this rally. What I find necessary for myself is the high exhaust conversion, which I have. You can see the swing arm is heavily uh, damaged by the rubbing of the exhaust onto the swing arm and these marks are actually from the stones which I hit with the swing arm and all that so if the exhaust would be here um, it would actually got beaten up even more not that my is in pristine condition but the I don't think that you have to have um, the high exhaust configuration for the rally but I actually think that for me it is really good because you really don't want to drop the bike and I dropped it a few times and to just mess with actually bending the exhaust back. What I really think is essential for the rally is a good set of crutch bars and really 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 good bash plate because that is something which is going to be super important on a rally. So what I have is Outback Mototech crash bars and I really like these crash bars and they have been through hell with me um, so this is the crash bars after me using them for about less than a year 
And these crush bars haven't moved a single bit at all. And I find that absolutely insane. Now, what I have here is a Yamaha Besh blade. And what I want to show you is that I have cracked this Besh blade uh, on the rally. And people will be like, what? But yeah, this is four millimeters of aluminium and it really got beaten up pretty badly. So there is a crack going all the way down through the weld. Um, and I didn't have the toolbox, obviously, because that would be ob obliterated. Uh, but if I wouldn't have a decent bash plate, this bike would be much more destroyed than it is. Now, when we are here with the engine, I think the important bit is this one. So, a lot of questions and a lot of discussion about whether the water pump needs to be actually protected. And I dropped the bike in such a way that I almost finished the race with it. Uh, broken engine casing. So this is a hit with the bike got in one of the pretty gnarly uh, terrain and basically what you have is you have a stones which stick out and then can damage it. So this is one of the biggest problems which I had on a rally. Not the water pump. Uh, what I wanted to do is I wanted to modify these crash bars so there would be bar going somewhere like this uh, and that would probably prevent this happening. So this is, this is definitely a place for improvement. Now, when we're talking about the protection, so I never thought this is gonna be possible, but as you can see, I have managed to bend the bark busters on both sides. And if I wouldn't have them, I would probably have my uh, brake lever and my um, clutch lever already gone. Uh, now the, it's just like this, but the bark busters did their job. Uh, but in in hundred in more than hundred thousand kilometers and a lot of it off road on both uh, Sisu and and this one, you know, I I never managed to do that. And on the rally, you just managed to crash. Okay, some little details. So the anti-slip um, pads. This is completely useless. This is just, you don't really need to have it there. Because if you look at it, where the uh, foot pegs are and where that thing is, you never will have your ties or anything in here, up there. And if you do, you're having sex with the motorbike. You are not riding the motorbike. So this portion of is actually useful, to be honest, because my legs, would actually be over there. So I would be grabbing here uh, when I do racing. So really that is a little bit of a gimmick. Um, charging, useful, of course. Ah, this one. Yes, you have to have a protector. And I don't think that the protector, which wouldn't be a solid plastic, would actually protect the headlight because you are riding behind the freaking 4x4s and other bikes, the stones were literally in my face. This bike got beaten up by the stones so much. So 100% again protection, this is a must. This is a must. One little detail that I did for the rally was to have a dual height uh, brake lever. So what I did is I welded a piece of uh, steel onto the brake lever. So I have a position for sitting where the foot is a little bit at the angle and then a position for standing where the boot is gonna be on the pack like that. So you need to have this piece a little bit higher. And that way it was comfortable for me to brake sitting and standing. It may surprise a lot of people, but I think that one of the most important changes I have done for the rally and why I didn't have much of the problems with it was the cockpit and to be honest this mount from lsadv.cz from Laosh who was racing as well that is absolutely amazing piece of kit because what you really need because the rally was navigational rally according to GPS you need this thing to be very stable you need to be um, not falling off and all that and you would not 
believe how many people had so many problems with the navigation and all that and you know you really don't want to start looking for your phone when uh, you have a special so the cockpit was really important in terms of the TPMS super useful to have it over there super useful I think that's what uh, really was going on and what really kind of you need to have I'm a really kind of disappointed about the bash plate because it cracked in the weld and I think it shouldn't crack in the weld. I am um, impressed that I have managed to bend the bark busters. Um, that is something unusual. Uh, but other than that, I think this is what you really kind of can raise um, as a package. Um, yeah, so that's it. I hope it was useful.